Hey there, guys. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Web Slingers Podcast. This is the one only show where we talk about all things Spider-Man and the Marvel Universe. And, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about this. We're going to obviously get into your guys' Q&A questions because we have some. We have a lot of them. Um, obviously, uh, not all of them that we got held up on made it in the show just because that's the, the show would be four hours. Um, uh, but we did select some of them. I promise you guys, just keep sending in questions. Just keep sending them in, and um, we will uh, we'll answer your questions. But there are a lot of them from uh, like three weeks ago <laughs> that are um, that are gonna be uh, answered right here uh, on the show. So, um, but before we get into any of that, we gotta talk about some news topics. We're gonna review the first two episodes of the Falcon and Winter Soldier um, because I have not reviewed Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, yet, and I'm going to review the first two episodes, um, just like I did with WandaVision, review the first two episodes, but that was also because they released the first two episodes, um, but anyway, let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's go ahead and talk about, um, some of the Marvel news, and the first news topic we're talking about, um, is this, um, the MCU has, uh, moved their release schedule, um, around a little bit. Uh, so, um, Black Widow, which we're going to talk about in the next news topic, uh, Black Widow has been moved from July 9th, 2021, uh, well, it's been moved from May of 2021 and has been moved to July 9th, uh, 2021, Shang-Chi has been moved to September 3rd, 2021, uh, Eternals stays exactly where it is on May, on November 5th, 2021. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home stays exactly where it is on December 17th. Uh, Doctor Strange is going to be released on March 25th, 2022. And then Thor Love and Thunder will be uh, released on May 6th, 2022. Um, now, it was also announced uh, in the same time as the new release schedule it was also announced that black widow is going to go to disney plus through premiere access uh, for an extra charge of 30 dollars um which i think uh, i still think premiere access should not exist um but they're going to do it anyway uh they're going to do it anyway so we'll talk about the black widow Disney Plus Premiere Access bullshit in a second, but let's talk about the new release schedule. What do I think of this new? Re- well, for the most part, the only two that are new release schedule that are new that are that that have new release dates are Black Widow and Shang Chi. Um, Black Widow makes sense. I mean, um, Black Widow uh, is coming out and was supposed to come out in May, um, and also one of the other things that we gotta keep in mind is that Ryan the Last Dragon. Um, is not doing too well. I'm, and I met, and we talked about this on the uh, uh, on the Zeke Setso show. Uh, Ryan the Last Dragon is not doing well in theaters. It's not doing too well in theaters. I think the total number so far is like seventy one million, um, and it definitely deserves way more than that because it's a really great movie. But um, it is um, not doing too well. So. You take in consideration that Ryan the Last Dragon's making uh, seventy one million dollars. Um, Disney can't afford to ri- to take that risk um, for Black Widow because just because Black Widow is a you know sort of big budget uh, superhero movie, um, and so moving it to July. Uh, hopefully by July, movie theaters will still be open. Movie theaters will be thriving a little bit more, um, and hopefully vaccines uh, will be. I mean, I, I know um, California has released plans to uh, to expand eligibility for uh, for vaccine. Uh, so as long as we're getting the vaccine out there and we're getting people people are getting vaccinated or people are being smart and doing exactly what they're supposed to do, then uh, maybe we can uh, get movie theaters to stay open for July 9th and hopefully you know we can all be able to go see Black Widow in the theater and not have to go and not have to be like oh well I'm just gonna watch it on Disney plus I'm just gonna pay $30 to watch on Disney plus you know um now I know there are a lot of people who tell me well Zeke what if you have a family of three it's gonna cost you 30 bucks to go and you know what you are exactly right because 
movie tickets nowadays, um, I bought my ticket for Godzilla vs. Kong. And my ticket for Godzilla vs. Kong was about, well, it was it was 20 bucks. It was a $20 ticket, you know. You spend anywhere between 15 to 20 bucks for a ticket uh, to go see a movie. If you got a family of three, that's going to be, that's going to be more than $30, you know. So, in that sense, renting Black Widow on Disney Plus is actually not that bad. It's not that bad of a deal. My issue is, is that you should be able to keep the movie on Disney Plus if you purchase the $30 for it. Because if it's just going to end up on Disney Plus for free anyway, then what's the point of buying it? What's the point of putting $30 into it if it's just going to end up on Disney Plus a couple months later? You know, because that's what Black, that's what's going to happen with Ryan the Last Dragon. Ryan the Last Dragon is available to get on Premiere Access. But I, first of all, I wanted to go see that movie. I went to go see that movie in the theater because I want to support theaters. Um, I went to go see that at the drive in, though. And also, um, you have uh, the. <laughs> um, what was it? What was I gonna say here? Um. Oh, you have the fact that Ryan the Last Dragon is pro- like probably around. Uh, let's see. Mulan was released in September, September, October, November, December. Yeah, Mulan ended up on Disney Plus in December. You know, and 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 so Ryan the Last Dragon. Let's see. March, February, March, April, May, June. It's probably going to be around June or July where you'll finally get to watch, you know, Ryan the Last Dragon for free. So it's not like I don't know. It it it's not like um, it's not worth it to me. You know, it's just not worth it. Now, personally, for me. If I was one of those people who did not want to go out, um, but I'm someone who goes out a lot anyway just because I work, um, as somebody who, if, if I was someone who didn't want to go out, yeah, I would put the, I would put up the $30 to watch Black Widow, but I'm not one of those people because I feel like, you know, because first of all, I work a lot, (laughs) um, but also, um, I feel like, you know, um, I'm not in the category for the high risk people to, to, to most likely affect for, for COVID to affect, you know? So, um, but look, um, it is, it is crazy. Uh, we're, we're living in crazy times. We are right now in kind of the, uh, recovery stage of the pandemic we've had it for a full year we've been living with this thing for a full year um we're 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 just starting to now see movie theaters open up we're starting to see movies getting released um kong versus godzilla is going to be a very big factor into whether or not people are ready to go back because if kong versus godzilla fails the movie theater industry is in trouble and movies are probably going to end up going straight to streaming. We're going to see a lot of movies move to streaming. If Godzilla vs. Kong does not do well in the theater, we're going to see a lot of people, you know. Now, let's talk about this whole Black Widow going to Premier Access. Um, again, makes makes a lot of sense. Um, Disney is going to do the same thing they're doing with Ryan the Last Dragon, which is release it both in theaters and on Disney Plus. Makes sense. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's going to be released in July. So probably around September or October, you might end up getting, uh, uh, black, you'll, you'll probably end up getting Black Widow on, uh, um, on Disney Plus for free, you know, which I don't mind because I'm going to go see it in the, th- I'm going to go see this on the big screen. Um, and then probably I'll see it probably twice on the big screen. Then I'll probably go and um, wait until it hits on Disney Plus, and then I'll watch it on Disney Plus for free. You know, and I won't. I'm not gonna pay thirty bucks to watch Black Widow. I'm just not gonna do that. So yeah, um, those are kind of my thoughts on everything. Um, uh, it doesn't surprise me that they've moved some of these movies, um, and it also doesn't surprise me that they're moving uh, uh, Black Widow to Disney Plus. So. All right, uh, let's move on to the Falcon and Winter Soldier reviews. So, um, 
Falcon and Winter Soldier has premiered. Uh, it, premiered it premiered last week, the same weekend as the Snyder Cut did. Um, which, if you want to see, if you want to hear my thoughts on the Snyder Cut, go to the Zixetso show. I did a full-on spoilers review on it. Um, but I watched. I ended up watching the first episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier before seeing the Snyder Cut. Um, now a lot of people are asking me, which one do I think is better, Snyder Cut or Falcon and Winter Soldier? They're two completely different things. They're two completely different stories and two completely different, uh, one is a move, one is a four hour movie and the other one's a 49 minute episode of a television series. So you can't compare the two. And then some people are like, how, do you think this is better? Like, we're going to get a question. Do, do you think it's better than WandaVision? Well, you can't even compare it to WandaVision because we've seen all of WandaVision. WandaVision has had all of its episodes. This has only had two episodes premiere. However, that being said, I love this show so far. I love what they're doing with this show. Because after... After um, WandaVision, I was really hoping that Falcon and Warner Soldier can kick it up a notch when it comes to the MCU shows. Um, can they keep that momentum going with the MCU shows? Because we have uh, WandaVision, which was awesome, which is honestly one of the best um Honestly, it's my second favorite uh, MCU um, property um, just outside, uh, favorite Marvel Studios project outside of, uh, like, it's my second favorite MCU thing. I don't know what to call it, but um, it's my second favorite thing in the MCU behind uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier. Um, I love... uh, I love WandaVision. It's my... I'll, I'll call it a story. It's my favorite MCU story since Captain America the Winter Soldier. Um, it's it's fantastic. I love it. Um, now... <sighs> Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, what do I think of this... Uh, of these first two episodes so far. I love them. I think so far I'm getting exactly uh, what I wanted out of this show. Um, when I saw the first kind of look at the show, I was expecting uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier to bring me those, the tone from Captain America the Winter Soldier. That that political thriller tone i was expecting that going into it and i'm getting that plus more um i'm getting those vibes and it, it it's so far become one of my, so far it's it's becoming one of my favorite sh- uh um shows on disney plus and i love the action i love how um how this the action in this show looks like movie quality action. It doesn't look like TV show CW Supergirl Flash action. No, 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 no. This is movie quality action and I love the look of it. I um there's a really great action scene in the opening of episode 1 where Falcon is like flying behind a helicopter. We see uh uh oh He's played by George St. Pierre. Oh my gosh, why am I forgetting his name? Oh shoot, why am I forgetting the character's name? Anyway, George St. Pierre's character, GSP's character. Um, uh, if if any of you guys don't know who George, just look up George St. Pierre UFC. You'll he he's a UFC fighter, but he was in uh, Captain America: The Winter Soldier in the opening scene of Captain America: The Winter Soldier, and he cut and he's back in this film, uh, not in this film, the this the show. Uh, and he was back for the opening of the first episode, and he's awesome. And it, I love that whole action scene. I thought it was great. I thought uh, the way it looked and the way it was shot was beautiful. Um, and I like seeing 
th- this to me is giving me more what I what I loved about Spider-Man Far From Home and what I loved about WandaVision and it's even what I love about this we're starting to see what the world looks like post Thanos snapping his fingers and wiping out half the universe like how does it affect each corner of the MCU Peter Parker had survivor's guilt we saw we saw Wanda refusing to move on without vision and in in a sense causing her to trap everybody in her dream because she's refusing to let go and now in this we're seeing it from a whole new perspective we're seeing you know like falcon goes to get a loan out like sam wilson goes to the bank to get a loan out to keep his family's boats and he can't even get a loan out. i was like well you haven't had any income in the last five years but how could i have had any income if i was gone you know that is a really really interesting um aspect that they've introduced here um and it's something that I think is uh, very, very fascinating. I love what they're doing with uh, Bucky. Um, having him being pardoned for all of his uh, crimes that the government thinks believes that he did. Um, having him being pardoned, but in that, but f- you know, as being pardoned, he has to do uh, counseling. He has to go through counseling and talk about everything that happened to him. Um, and I love, I love the back and forth with his counselor. One of my favorite moments from episode two is when the counselor makes Sam and Bucky, uh, sit together. And I love, just love the, the staring contest, um, that we saw in the trailer. But I also really love, um, um, uh, the, also the back and forth between Bucky and the, and the counselor in the first episode where he's like, um, where he's he's pour, he's pouring his heart out, and then all of a sudden he like he's like the counselor goes bullshit, and he's like you are a terrible therapist. <laughs> I love that. I just love it. It's so funny, and also the humor in this is really great. Like there's that one really great joke that they released a clip of a couple weeks ago, but um, I love the joke. Um, uh, you know, oh what we we're gonna what do you what do you think we're gonna fight Gandalf? How do you know Gandalf? He's like, I read The Hobbit when it first came out. <laughs> um, I'm pr- and and I love it when he's like, ah, and he's like, Doctor Strange is a sorcerer, and he's like, ah, a sorcerer is a wizard without a hat. <laughs> I, love I love that line. That's so funny. Um, but yeah, no, uh, this show so far has given me everything I wanted it to. It's everything that I want to be plus a little bit more. And it's becoming one of my favorite parts of um, this new kind of. Um, it's becoming one of my new. I don't know. I think the MCU TV shows for me are starting to become more entertaining than the MCU movies. Not that I don't like the MCU movies, I do. Uh, obviously, Captain America: The Winter Soldier, fantastic. Infinity War, fantastic. Endgame is really great, but. I think I'm starting to have more enjoyment out of the MCU TV shows because, you know, WandaVision, I, honestly, the more I, I've, I've now watched WandaVision all the way through like six times. Like, I love that show. I love that show. And it's become one of my favorite TV shows ever. Um, but also Falcon and Winter Soldier is also kind of, um, uh, moving along and bringing some new, uh, New aspects to the um, uh, to uh, to the MCU that's making it feel more like okay, this universe can continue without Iron Man and Captain America. Like this universe is going to be okay without Iron Man and Captain America, because honest, that was one of my biggest concerns. Was okay, you've killed Iron Man, and Captain America has moved on. What what's gonna happen now? Like, how is this MCU gonna move on without the two of them? And they're figuring out a way to make it work. And I, 
I like that. I really, really do. So, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, Q&A questions because we got a lot of them. Uh, we're going to move on to the Ask the Spider-Verse segment. This is the one and only part of the show where you guys send in Q&A questions and we are going to answer them. Uh, so let's start with the first question here. And the first question is, thoughts on the Ralph Boner reveal in the WandaVision finale? Oh, boy. Here we go. Um, I don't mind it. Um, I like it because, honestly, it's exactly what I speculated. Uh, I had kind of thought and speculated that this was not really Quicksilver, that this was somebody that, well, this was somebody else that Agatha, that somebody made up, you know, I don't think Wanda made him up, I think somebody else made him up, and sure enough, we knew that it was Agatha who uh, sent fake Pietro to um, to Wanda's home. Uh, we learned that, I believe, in episode... Uh, what episode was it? It was the episode where you see all the flashbacks of Wanda when she was a kid, and then I can't remember what what. Actually, I have Disney Plus right here on my tablet. Why don't I just look it up here? Um, gonna try and take a look here. What episode of WandaVision was that? Uh. That was episode eight. Episode eight was that. Um that uh Agatha revealed um Agatha revealed that she is the one who um who sent fake Pietro to that the house. Um and so I didn't mind it. I thought it was um I thought it was a pretty interesting reveal and it and it, it honestly it was subversive in a good way. You know, it's not, it wasn't like um Iron Man 3, where they marketed Ben Kingsley as the Mandarin, and in all the trailers, they made it seem like Ben Kingsley is the Mandarin. Well, no, now he's not. Well, that just makes that just makes all the marketing feel like bullcrap. So, uh, there's that. Uh, Favorite and least favorite moments from WandaVision. Uh, favorite moment from WandaVision uh, is probably the finale uh, where um, Wanda is saying goodbye to her kids and to Vision. Uh, least favorite moment? Um, least favorite moment, I think, for me is... You know what moment that I honestly didn't really care for? It's not that I didn't like it or hate it. It's just a moment that I just didn't care for. It was actually um, when the scroll came in and told Monica Rambeau that, hey, you know, she didn't say it, she didn't she didn't say it, but she kind of it's heavily implied that that scroll was sent by Carol Danvers and that. You know, I just, I don't know. There was just something about it that, to me, just didn't really um, mesh well, I guess you can say. Um, I don't know. I just I just didn't like it. I thought, I, I it's not that I didn't like it. I, I sh Let me rephrase that. I did, it's not that I didn't like it. It's just that I just didn't care for it. Um, I think it makes sense. It makes sense why a scroll would show up there because, you know, there's this history between Monica and Captain Marvel. We obviously saw her as a little girl in um, Captain Marvel, and now she has grown up, and she has. There, we're we're starting to see a little bit of, um, you know, in one of the in episode four, I think it was. I can't remember what episode it was, but when uh, Monic, when uh, I think it was Jimmy Wu who says, um, "Why don't we just get Captain Marvel?" and she's like, "Where?" and uh, Monica Rambo goes, "We don't speak of her." We're not we're not talking about her, you know. Um, so obviously there's some kind of a history there. There's some kind of reasoning why Monica is not a big fan of uh, of of hers right now at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, I um that's but that end credit scene is probably my least favorite moment. Uh, just the, the the whole oh someone sent me uh, it's time it's time to go go where. And the scroll just points up at, at the sky. I'm just like, eh, 
really. I mean, honestly, the way I thought that end credit scene was going to go, she was like, someone sent me here to, to get you. And she was going to say, who? And then I thought it was either going to be two people. It was either going to be Nick Fury or it was going to be Carol Danvers. And uh, I, I don't know, maybe maybe it was because of that. Maybe it was because I was a little disappointed in that part of it that I didn't, um, that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Who knows? Um, all right. Uh, do you think Wanda reading from the book will lead to the events of Doctor Strange 2? Uh, yeah, I, I mentioned that in uh, in last week's episode. I mentioned that um, that her reading from that book is going to have many. I think she's going to figure out a way to have what she wants without trapping people in her um in her little sitcom world she's gonna have she's gonna want her family but she wants at least her kids um oh that was my tablet i accidentally almost turned it off um uh what was that time oh yeah she's gonna want to bring her kids back and i think she's gonna be reading from that book and in order and in and while she's trying to bring her kids back, she's gonna like tear open a hole in the multiverse dimensional rig that's gonna cause massive chaos and something that Doctor Strange is probably going to have to fix. So um yeah, that's probably what I uh, what I think is gonna go down. Uh all right. Uh what songs or artists do you wanna hear in Guardians of the Galaxy volume? I think you meant volume three. Uh, volume three. Um, oh man, that's 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 a good question. Uh, I know we heard it in Captain Marvel, but I would love it if Peter Quill had uh, the song. Oh yes, wait a minute, Mister Postman. Um, we heard that in Captain Marvel, which I thought was really funny. Um, so I would really love to hear that song in there. Um. It was a deleted scene in Avengers Infinity War, but I would love if they would get some, uh, the song New York Groove in there. You know, I'm back, back in the New York Groove. Um, uh, let's see, get some Marvin Gaye in there. Like, I would love to hear, I know we, we had Marvin Gaye in, uh, volume one, but I would love to hear Peter Quill singing, uh, either, um, uh, I would love to hear hear him sing the song uh, "Sexual Healing." I would love to hear Peter Quill sing that. That would be pretty funny. Um, I don't know what other what other artists or songs. Someone online, someone I I was scrolling around Twitter and stuff like that, but someone said it'd be funny if in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three we heard uh, Prince in there. I'm like, I don't know if we're gonna hear Prince in in that uh, in that lineup. It'd be interesting, but I don't think we're going to see it. Um, let's see. We'll probably hear... If we if we do hear Michael Jackson, it's probably going to be one of his earlier songs, like probably uh, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I can't think of anything else, but uh, I, I do want to hear more... Um, uh, I do want to hear at least... The song Sexual Healing, because that's a really good song. Um, okay. Uh, do you think Shang-Chi will stick to the... the well, no, no, we're just talking about this. Uh, do you think Shang-Chi will stick to the to a theatrical release only, or will it go to Disney Plus? Um, I honestly think, depending on what the situation looks like on September 3rd, it's going to end up on Disney Plus through Premiere Access. Because Marvel just can't keep holding on to these movies anymore. They just can't. Unfortunately, this is going to be like Warner Brothers, where Warner Brothers can't keep holding on to these movies anymore. You know, Warner Brothers, as much as they wanted their movies to be theatrical only, they can't do that because there's still a lot of places where movie theaters aren't allowed to open. So, you know, that unfortunately, we live in that situation here. But, uh, yeah, no, I would... Uh, I I do believe that Shang Chi will, uh, that Shang Chi is gonna end up being a uh, uh, a 
that's going to end up going. I Again, depending on what the situation looks like by then, I think it's going to end up on um, uh, Disney Plus. So, uh, speaking of Disney Plus, uh, will you pay for Black Widow on Disney Plus? Um, depends on if I like the movie. If I go see it in the theater and I really like the movie, then probably. Um, but I don't really know. Um, okay, uh, next question. Uh, I don't think John Watts is a good choice for Fantastic Four. Really, I think he's a really good choice. Um, personally, I like to see Josh. Tra- <laughs> I like to see Josh Trank direct it. Good oh, thoughts. Uh, J.K. J.K. Um, <laughs> you like to see Josh? That'd be funny, right? That'd be pretty funny, right? If if Marvel Studios hired him to do Fantastic Four, and he just gave us the same movie, except you know probably better um i don't know um uh i don't know i you know what's funny i was actually just watching um i was just watching um i watched the channel uh cinema sins and i was just watching what the one they did on uh fans four stick um um the the fantastic four movie from 2015 um, I was, I was watching that and I was like, I was like, you know what? There's a lot, there's a, I'm surprised. There's a lot of stuff in that movie. That's just really bad. Like I, I had forgotten how much bad stuff is in that fantastic four movie. And it, there's a lot, there's a lot. <laughs> um, uh, no, I don't think, and you know, Josh Trank's not going to direct fantastic four. I don't think he's going to direct any big budget studio movies anymore after his experience um do you think falcon we were just talking about this too do you think falcon winter soldier is better than wandavision um no uh it's it's too early to, to say uh we've seen all of wandavision um you can't make that fair comparison so let, let's let's see how falcon winter soldier plays out for the rest of the series but i'm not gonna make that comparison uh what storyline do you think the mcu the mcu should build up to next I think that the next three phases should not build up to a big bad. I think the next three phases should build up to Secret Wars. Phase four can be like the Avengers big comeback. Phase five can be like you can have another Avengers sequel with maybe like young Avengers in there. But then the third phase six. I think should be building up to secret. I think phase four, five, and six should build up to secret wars. And I think with the this idea of the multiverse and the watchers being implemented, I think that the watchers are a perfect segue into us getting uh, secret wars uh, in in a movie. So I I don't know. That's what I would like to see. Um, save Galactus for another time. Save. I don't want to see them build up to Galactus just yet. I want to. I want that. I want them to save that. Um, because I think what would be very interesting is if they go down the Secret Wars route. Um, and you know, if for those of you who don't know what Secret Wars is, basically it's it's basically another. It's basically um, everyone gets thrown into one giant area and they all fight basically you know it's it's that's basically what it kind of is um so uh so yeah that's that's what i would want um which do you think is better fantastic four 2005 or fantastic four rise of the silver surfer um oh easily fantastic four 2005 um rise of the silver surfer is not good it's not a good movie uh i i don't hate Rise of the Silver Surfer as much as everyone else does, but it's a bad movie. It is a bad movie. And me personally, the 2005 film, I have some nostalgia for just because I remember seeing that in the theater and then I remember um, watching it all the time on DVD. And I just remember being a huge fan of that movie. So, um,. Yeah, uh, Fantastic Four, two thousand five, um, but but let's be honest, 
all of the Fantastic Four movies have sucked. So let's hope the MCU can give us something good. Um, all right. Uh, next question. Uh, thoughts on Wesley Snipes on the Wesley Snipes Blade films? Um, I like the first one. I hate the other two movies. I like the first one. I hate the other two. Blade Two, I think, is better than Blade Three, but Blade Blade Two and Three are just I can't I cannot I could not watch those movies all the way through. I could probably watch bits and pieces of Blade Two, um, but I don't think I can even get through the whole thing without stopping it. So there's that. Um, and the final question: uh, Are you excited for the Wakanda series on Disney Plus? Absolutely. I am super excited. Super excited for that series on Disney Plus. I can't wait to see what uh Ryan Coogler um does with that. Um so yeah, we'll we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Anyway, guys, that will do it for this episode of the Web Series Podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh there is a brand new episode of the Zeke Sensor Show that just dropped. Uh, earlier today, so if you want to go check that out, definitely go check that out. It's a really good episode. Um, and, uh, yeah, definitely make sure to keep sending in questions. Uh, yeah, uh, check out all the other shows we got going on here. We're going to be uploading Throwback Thursday, um, this time on Tuesday, just because, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong comes out on Wednesday, and we want to have a, a review for Godzilla King of the Monsters, uh, just before that movie comes out, so, Definitely tune in for that. So thank you guys so much for listening. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.